Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got not one, not two, but three very special guests. They are the co-founders of the Nika Natadores based in Nicaragua. That is, that is an unexpected tongue twister. Today, we have the pleasure of sitting down with Timmy Hayes, Scott Robinson, and Kyle Shoemaker. Guys, how are you doing today? Good. Doing pretty awesome. Thanks for having Thanks. us on. Yeah. We're all screaming from different time zones. Uh, I'm in mountain time down in Nicaragua. Scott's in Colorado and Kyle's on the East Coast. But it's cool to get together with you guys and, and share our story. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for you guys to share the story because I know the loose ends of it, but uh, but I'm excited to sit down and, and hear it from you guys' perspective. So to get started, uh, you guys all met through swimming, I'm pretty sure, or or have all, all have swimming in common. I know Timmy and Scott, you guys swam at Virginia. Kyle, can you remind me where you swam again? I swam at Clemson. Clemson. Uh, so before, before the program was cut, so... Um, Timmy, let's, let's start with you. How did, how did you meet these, <clears throat> these hooligans and, um, and how did swimming play a part in that? Yeah. So, um, Kyle and I actually grew up together, um, in Bethlehem. We swam for a, uh, club team called attack. It no longer exists now, but, um, it was a kind of a powerhouse club. Um, we had kids that went to Texas, Georgia. I went to Virginia, Indiana, Um, so it was kind of like the top tier club in the mid Atlantic. Um, and Kyle and I started swimming together probably at like age 10 and we've kind of been best friends since. And, um, I actually met Scott in like 2003 or 2004, we were, uh, on national select team together. So we went to the Olympic training center and, uh, it just so happened. We both chose university of Virginia. And, uh, I think our coach, Mark Bernardino knew that I was kind of a, a wildcat and uh, he knew Scott was a little bit more, uh, you know, down to the roots. So he put us together as uh, first year roommates and we lived together all four years, uh, trained together in Virginia. So uh, when I, when I had the idea for Nick and Nads, um, Nick and Nads is short for Nick and Nadadores. Uh, I couldn't, have, I couldn't think of two better people to reach out to, uh, you know, my childhood best friend and, somebody who I had the ultimate respect for, uh, in college and, um, you know, a great deal of, of, uh, development through your, uh, adolescent or or young adulthood in, uh, Scott. So that's how I know them. And obviously swimming bonded us training together, um, you know, competing together, being on the same team, stuff like that bonded us in the same way that swimming offers those, uh, those same, life skills to everybody that's involved in the sport, but, um, Scott, Kyle, you want to elaborate a little bit more on, on our relationships? Yeah. um, Well, yeah, Timmy and I, we, we definitely met when we were 10. It was, uh, my, my club team had, had just kind of merged in with, with Tim's and we were practicing at two different sites. And so we kind of showed up at the first meet and started button heads trying to race each other. And, uh, and then eventually the, 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 practice consolidated so we got to become training partners um and that was you know kind of the start of a long friendship yeah and timmy timmy mentioned um that when we started swimming together at virginia this is a good balance and i'd say that 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 holds true with with nika nads um with the three of us and then some other folks that we work with too just a a good good team atmosphere where we we kind of balance each other out with you know, creativity and then other ways of thinking. Um, but yeah, we, at this point, we, we go back, um, a while and, um, it's a cool, cool story of how we met, especially with Timmy and I, when we were 16 years old and had no idea. I mean, I don't think we, we didn't see each other for a couple of years. And then we both showed up, um, to a dorm room that we were about to share for a year. That was pretty wild. Yeah. Um, what well, at the zone select camp or the, what, the, the camp you guys met at, did you guys bond pretty immediately or was, or was that more of a, a, a long-term thing? 
I think we did because I remember, I, I only remember a few guys from that trip, but I, I remember, I remember Timmy. I remember we went to a Colorado college hockey game, which is now kind of just down the road for me living in Colorado now, but yeah, I think we did. Um, we didn't keep in touch, let's say, um, between then and, and college, but, um, when we showed up in Charlottesville, uh, for our first year of college, we definitely knew of each other and, and remember. Yeah. So that's, I, again, I just love the swimming stories and, and how swimming brings people together like this. Um, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years down the line and you guys are, you know, now in business together, but, um, that, that's, that's really cool. So the Nika Natadores, um, Timmy, I'm, I'm pretty sure this was you, you, your idea or your brainchild. Can you tell us about how this came about? Um, you know, what, what sparked the idea for you and how you built on it? Yeah. Um, so I always kind of start this story with, uh, just accepting the fact that the only thing I know in life is swimming. You know what I mean? Like I went to college and I majored in Spanish, but I didn't really know what I was going to do with my life. Um, the only thing I really know and the only thing I really love in, in life has been swimming. And so uh, after college, I kind of bumped around a little bit, made my own mistakes. And uh, I ended up in Nicaragua volunteering um, for a program called Mana Project. And uh, I was working in a public school with some um reform kids down in, uh, in Chiquilistago, which is the community we work in right now. And uh, I made connections with a few kids. I was living at a house that had a backyard pool and uh, just like kind of uh, informally invited some kids over to, to learn how to swim. And uh, the first time they came over, there might've been like seven or eight kids. And then the week after, you know, they all went back to school and they told all their friends about, you know, oh, Timmy's having a swim party after school, whatever. And that's kind of how the ball started rolling. And uh, looking at it, I thought, you know, there's an opportunity here to get kids involved in swimming in a more serious way, but also provide things that are lacking in the public schools. And so both my parents were educators. Uh, my mom's a teacher. My dad was a principal. And I thought, you know, it, it'd be really great to to get these kids in proper schools. Uh, private schools down here have a lot more resources than public schools. And so I kind of just morphed the two ideas of uh, what I love and what I know in terms of swimming and also something that could be really positive in terms of education. And uh, when I reached out to Scott and Kyle, they put more of the uh, kind of uh, framework into the founding of it. You know, um, I always kind of, you know, there's searchers and there's planners and, uh, you know, somebody like me who's a really creative uh, kind of energetic dynamic off the wall kind of guy who wants to do things you know off the off you know just the seat of my brain they need people like scott and kyle to kind of reel in what's realistic and then also establish um the parameters of of what we want to offer the kids and how we want to run the business and so um that's how it started it kind of started uh in a really informal way and then when Scott and Kyle got involved, it was more, you know, we've got a 501c3, a Warren Incorporated business. And then, you know, uh, simultaneously as I was doing this, I was actually helping a missionary build a pool for his uh, mission complex, which uh, turns out to be the pool we train in today. It's only three lanes and, and 20 yards long. But uh, we've, we've trained some fast kids that are now starting to develop into high caliber swimmers. And um you know, here we are almost eight years down, down the road, uh, in terms of offering scholarships and, uh, developing youth in, in the low income area of one of the poorest countries in the Western hemisphere. Yeah. So uh, Kyle, Scott, just from your perspective, you know, when, when, uh, Timmy reached out with this idea, what, what were your initial thoughts and then how, how did you help get that ball rolling? I'll go ahead and kick it off, Scott. Um, so I, I still remember the conversation. Tim was calling me and it was, you know, probably eight or nine o'clock at night. And I had just gotten home from, from practice. I was coaching swimming in the States at the time. And so I was, you know, working full time and then coaching in the evenings. And I had intended leaving coaching after I got a full-time job, but I just, I couldn't stop. Uh, I was able to, to still get to practice a few days a week. And I just really started to fall in love with that side of the sport. Um, 
Um, and I, and I never thought I would be a swim coach growing up, but when I graduated school, I didn't quite have a job and I needed some, some income and that was, uh, an easy way to find some gas money. And so Tim called me and he's, he's telling me, you know, his, his idea and his plan. And I'm just like, this is exactly what I've enjoyed about swimming is, you know, I'm seeing these kids that have, have never really, you know, had a structured program, you know, maybe they did a summer league for, you know, a couple days a week, you know, every other summer, but, you know, this was the first time we were going back and kind of building a, a team and then the kids were practicing regularly and getting some real instruction and it's like they just to see the excitement in their eyes with kind of learning how to do something new and then improving and so tim has this idea now that he wants to do it in nicaragua and he wants me involved and and it's you know it's going to be a charity and it's it's going to be great and that was really what i remember from the conversation so i was i was kind of sold from day one um and then the the fact that that he acknowledged that he was going to need some some help on <laughs> making sure that that everything was running running smoothly and 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 the right way um, to make sure that it was it was sustainable. Um, so yeah, it was it was pretty exciting to kind of you know just kind of be on the ground floor of that that conversation. Um, yeah. Cool. <clears throat> and for me, um, at the time when when Timmy started started thinking about this and and sending Kyle and I messages. And Kyle and I had not met at that point. Um, we swam against each other um, in the ACC, but I was, I was a couple years into my first job after I had finished swimming and um, was, was just working long hours doing stuff that I didn't think was that valuable for the world. Um, wasn't all that fulfilled with what I was doing. So I kind of, was already looking at doing something different. Um, swimming had definitely opened my eyes up with some travel outside of the U S to just getting what the value of getting some experience, living, working, understanding, um, other cultures. And, um, when Timmy actually reached out to me, I was, I was doing a bunch of research on the Peace Corps. I was taking the foreign service exam, thinking that I might want to work, um, an embassy or something like that, just, just get out of the country for a few years. And, uh, then Timmy reached out kind of serendipitously about, Hey, let's, let's look into doing something special, um, down in Nicaragua. And it was right up my alley. I mean, it, it's, it was, um, something that I was, I was definitely looking for. So it, it was, it was really interesting how it kind of all came together at that point. But, um, I saw that it was an opportunity to use to, to kind of give back to the community that had given a lot to the three of us. Uh, it had taught us a lot of really good values and life skills. Um, and that, that's how it got started. And, and we've kind of just been, been um, marching forward since then. That was, that was 2014. Yeah. And so, so <clears throat> like you said, it's been, rocking and rolling since then. So let's get into the, you know, the more day to day, um, Timmy, again, let's, let's circle back to you. Um, you're in Nicaragua now you've lived there. I'm pretty sure pretty much since this started. Um, so like yeah. how, how, what is, what does your day to day look like now? How, how has this project evolved and, um, you know, what is, what are your daily tasks involve? Yeah. So, um, obviously that coach, uh, in the beginning, it was, in the beginning, I was living in Managua, um, and it was about really starting the program, establishing the relationship. Uh, and now I would say I'm more in the role of like a community figure, a coach, a mentor. Um, but then on the administrative side, I, I spearhead all the fundraising. Um, and a day to day, I, I get up really early on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I do morning practices um, before the kids go to school. So I, I start practice at five. Uh, they swim from five to seven. They go to school. And then I spend my day in Managua. I go to like a little coffee house, do work, whether it's writing any reports, putting uh, content on social media, uh, writing newsletters, maintaining relationship with donors, looking for new networks of donors. Um, and then in the afternoon, I go back to this, I go back to the pool and I do afternoon practices and we've, uh, we've three groups that swim on Monday, Wednesday, Friday afternoon, 
And then I go to Managua as well on Saturday mornings. And then I have an assistant who does our learn to swim programs on Tuesday and Thursdays, which is uh, where I work from home on Tuesday and Thursdays. Um, so that's kind of what my day to day looks like. Um, as anybody that's listening who coaches or any swim parent or any swimmer knows, um, knows the, you know, the routine of, of going to the pool and putting your time in on deck. Um, and that's honestly what I enjoy the most. Um, I enjoy, you know, I, you know, I, I enjoy really taking a step back and looking at some of the ways these kids have developed. I mean, uh, anybody can, um, take a kid who already knows how to swim and, uh, kind of, you know, get them a little bit faster, but you got to remember when these kids, uh, started, you know, they were swimming in jeans. They weren't swimming in jeans. They were just <laughs> like diving into the pool with jeans and a t-shirt. They didn't have a swimsuit. They never been in the pool. Um, and, uh, so, you know, when I look at some of the kids, like one of the older kids named Maverick, who's down like 56 long course meters in the hundred free and thinking, you know, I remember when he was a nine-year-old and uh, swimming in jeans and in a green pool uh, that, you know, <laughs> we never knew that it would get this far. Um, and there's, there's, there's literally hundreds of those success stories. And so when I'm on deck, it's almost like I can take a step back because, you know, when it started, it's really hard what's the phrase Kyle you can't see the forest through the trees or something like that you know you never know what's going to end up and uh you, you know you take a step back every afternoon when I'm at the pool and I think wow these kids are swimming fast you know now they're doing 300s on 315 or um you know I'm pushing them to the level where they're still hungry for more and uh and that's the kind of way I worked as a swimmer and um so you're you're to answer your question, the day-to-day -day of what I really enjoy most is coaching and being on deck. But uh, the operational side of things is what I, um, what I also include as, uh, as part of my role in this organization. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, so, uh, you know, you're in Pennsylvania. Uh, I, you have a full-time job, but you're still involved. What, what does that involvement look like for you? So, uh, I mean, for, for the most part, it's, it's really just kind of staying in touch with Tim, um, and some of the other folks that we have on, on, you know, kind of, you know, an extension of our kind of advisory board network, um, and just, you know, keeping high level discussions moving forward. Um, we, we do run pretty lean as an organization. So there's, there's some administrative responsibility that, that Scott and I take on as, you know, as board members, as just kind of volunteers. Um, we're, we're getting to the point where, you know, we're, we're starting to hire some, some professional help in, in certain areas, like, you know, just kind of counting bookkeeping, that sort of thing to, in order to make sure that we're not missing anything. And that way we can kind of focus on, on some of the more high level, you know, type discussions. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been able to, to get down to Nicaragua with the exception of, of last year and, and so far this year, but I think the plan is I'm going to get down there in, in November, December. Um, so I, I've been able to kind of see, see the program, you know, in person and, 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 you know, witness Tim on deck and, and still do a little bit of coaching actually, uh, even though my Spanish is not great. Um, you know, having some, it's actually really impressive when, you know, I'm, I'm down there and there's some, some 10, 11 year olds, um, that are, that are just doing my translating for me. The ones that have, have really aced all of their English lessons. And they're, they're the ones that are down there translating for me and, um, you know, Tim's off, you know, climbing a tree or something. So it's, it's been really cool to, to be, you know, involved to that extent. And, you know, certainly would, would love to, you know, be down there as, as frequently as, as four or five times a year. Um, but I mean, recently travel has been, been a little bit difficult. Um, so for now, I just, you know, try to stay involved and stay in touch with Tim. I think we talk almost every day. Um, you know, whether it's about the program or just, just as friends. Uh, so that's right now the extent of, of kind of where I'm at. Um, but another thing to jump in, uh, Kyle, Kyle's been huge before COVID started, we had uh, exchange trips. So for three years in a row, we took, we took five Nicaraguans a year up to the States um, and they got to compete. We take them to New York city. Um, they got to go to a, a you know, a couple of days in a public school in Bethlehem. Um, and so Kyle was really uh, 
kind of point man on, on leading those trips as well. Um, setting up homestays for some of the kids, which is really like a, a life changing experience for the kids. Um, so we're hoping to get into that again next year. We couldn't do it last year. We had it set up with a club in, uh, in San Diego called North coast aquatics, but then COVID hit. And then this year it still wasn't right. So we're hoping to get that back to that next year. Um, back to maybe back to Bethlehem, but Kyle was also huge in, in helping, uh, establish that exchange trip uh he's not gonna he's not gonna note that but that was a huge uh, opportunity for those kids too that was that, that was probably more of a as much of a life-changing experience for me as i think it was for those kids that, those are those yeah. are pretty awesome we'll have to get back we'll have to touch on that going we used, we took him to a uh, an amusement park called dorney park and so it's the first time these kids are riding roller coasters and stuff and they're doing flips and <laughs> We got like selfies, the one kid just trying to try not to throw up. And me and Kyle are just like <laughs> pushing them into these big roller coasters and stuff. It was awesome. Well, I mean, my takeaway from it was, you know, I grew up in, in Warren County, New Jersey, which is, you know, just across the river, of, you know, from where I'm at in Pennsylvania. And, you know, I'd been into New York City, you know, kind of ventured in for an event or, or one reason or another, but never really like went in just to experience the city. And so when we brought the kids up and we're like, yeah, we're going to go into New York for the day. Um, we spent the entire day there. We, we rented bikes and, and rode around Central Park. And it's like I was experiencing some of this stuff for the first time, too. And um, so, like, I mean, I was sharing that, you know, you know, wide eyes and, you know, you know, ear to ear smile that these kids had just because it was it was an incredible experience. Um, and then, you know, being able to, you know, kind of see how much they, they appreciated the opportunity as well. It's like, they, I mean, they recognize that it, you know, this was a unique experience for them and that, you know, a lot of, a lot of their friends and, and family and community members, you know, they didn't have the chance to kind of do this and, you know, spend some time in Philadelphia, spend some time in, you know, the amusement park and then New York city, it's like all in the same week and then going to school in the States and, it, those those are pretty special trips so hopefully we'll we'll be able to uh get some kids traveling a bit more in uh, the next couple of years yeah and one of the one of the things about that too and and we can talk about that at some point that makes that so special is i think you know just for for people listening knowing where these kids are coming from and then thinking about them riding you know riding the streets of new york city and having that experience and the way that they've grown to and, and been able to do things like that it is pretty, it's pretty incredible. So um, at some point we'll, we'll have to get Timmy to kind of describe where, where these kids actually come from and what their day to day is. But um, just real quick back to, you know, Coleman, your question, I think Kyle and I more or less just try to support Timmy and be, be his support system. However, we can help um, day to day, but some of the things that Timmy didn't mention is kind of like how his how his day to day has evolved over the years. What what he did probably does day to day now and what he did six years ago is probably pretty different. But you know, a lot of the stuff he said sounds like uh, sounds like a coach maybe in the states, like a club coach. But um, you you also have to remember he's he's managing a, like about a hundred kids who are going to school. Um, on Nick and Nad's scholarships who he's checking in on how they're doing at school um, five or six years ago would have been driving them to practice, picking them up at their house in a, in a pickup truck um, would have been checking in on pe- teacher parent uh, conferences, um, basically managing most of these kids lives in school and then in, in the pool um, so there's a lot that, that goes on with that. And now I think we've, we've made it to the point where Timmy mentioned he's got an assistant who is a, a graduate of Nika Nads. His name is Gerald, but he's got some support there to help out with some of that stuff. But it goes, it goes far beyond just, just being a club coach. He's, he's like a very much like a mentor, older brother, kind of father figure to a lot of the kids in this community and does a lot of the work that a lot of parents do um, kind of where, what we're used to, but Timmy's, Timmy is kind of that figure for a lot of these kids on a day-to-day basis. Um, so that's, that's great insight. And again, I I feel like that's a great segue to, um, 
Timmy, if, if you could, you know, kind of, you've been living there for a long time, describe what, what the day-to-day looks like for these kids or for the students down there. Yeah. So now as Scott mentioned, uh, seven, eight years in these kids day-to-day life is actually pretty different than their peers, um, who aren't involved in the program. Um, but you know, seven, eight years ago, their lives were the same as their peers. Um, so the day-to-day lives of the kids, like in, uh, in Chiquile Stagua, there's, a, there's a big lack of, uh, infrastructure, right? So it's a lot of dirt roads. Uh, you see people still riding livestock, um, ox drawn carts, horses. Um, there's a huge lack of technology. Um, so th- none of the kids have computers in their homes. None of them have Wi-Fi. Um, they basically, uh, spend about less, to, less than a dollar for like a week of uh, data on their cell phone. And that gets them Facebook, WhatsApp, you know, they don't really even know how to use Google. Um, the internet to them is Facebook or social media or WhatsApp. Um, and so there are a lot of different struggles, I guess you could identify in terms of what, what these kids live and, uh, overcome in terms of, you know, lack of running water. They might not always have uh, power. They live in really, um, they're not nuclear homes, right? There's not just a mother and a father and a couple of kids. It's like, you know, they kind of live with their uncles and aunts and their grandparents and they all scrape together their money um, to kind of survive because the, you know, we've, we've done the research and the average monthly income of families is about $280 a month. Um, they don't have cars. Um, so, you know, we out, like Scott mentioned, I used to drive them to practice, to, to school in my pickup truck. Um, now we, we hire some of the team parents or friends, of the friends of the team to, um, do the transportation to get the kids to and from school, to get the kids to and from practice. Um, if we want to do uh, like a session at the long course pool, it's not like, you know, mommy and daddy are going to drop them off at the pool. You know, we pile 10 or 15 kids in the back of my pickup truck and that's how we get there. If, if we go to a meet, we either have to contract a bus or we borrow a, a little van. Um, it's not like mommy and daddy drive them, um, and drop them off at the meet. So, um, there is, there is. You know, you, you call them low income, um, but it's it's different. It's a different dynamic than it is uh, in low income neighborhoods in the states. Um, there's 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 not a, like there's not a violent or uh, you know a lot of people immediately consider oh low income means they're from the you know, really rough neighborhoods. These parents are really supportive. Um, and that's the reason that they're in the program. You know what I mean? Like these parents and these kids, they have goals. So if you think low income or rough neighborhoods, you're kind of on the wrong track. It's really just rural, um, uh, kind of forgotten communities that just never got the right opportunities to, to kind of move forward socioeconomically. Um, and so we're offering a service to get these kids proper education, which in the future will result in uh, better job opportunities um, and, you know, university educations, uh, which will open opportunities. And it will be kind of a generational movement in terms of uh, in terms of how we're empowering kids, you know, in cycles. Um, and so, yeah, I guess their daily lives are very different. Um, and it's not like they pay for the program. They don't swim, you know, it's, we don't have monthly income. Everything that, uh, sustains our program comes from fundraising dollars. Um, and so, you know, when people give, give to Nika and Adores, it's, it's literally offering these kids like first class opportunities at a better life. Um, I guess, does that answer your question? Is Scott and Kyle, do you want to chime in with a little bit more, you know, background? Well, yeah, I think, I think a a way to kind of look at their, their home life is not necessarily focus on low income. It's low opportunity. Um, Yeah. There, there, there there isn't a, you know, kind of a logical step out, you know, for the most part, the parents are, are busy, you know, kind of working, working their jobs to kind of sustain what they have. And, you know, they don't have the ability to drive their kids to a different school. And so then they end up just going to the public school and, 
you know, um, you know, Tim, maybe speak a little bit about what, you know, kind of what the attrition rate is at, at public school for most of these kids. I mean, my understanding is that, you know, maybe fifth or sixth grade, if, if, if a kid isn't, you know, showing that they're going to be the top of the class that, you know, maybe they just get kind of designated to, to be okay, well, maybe school's not for you. And, um, and then they just kind of tell them what to do. And it's like, we, we know that fifth, sixth grade is not, you know, it's not late enough in, in a kid's life to decide what their, their ultimate potential is. Um, I mean, there's, there's, everyone has their different stages for development. And so what, you know, what we're able to do is, is kind of take a group of kids that sees an opportunity to, to kind of get better and recognizes, you know, not just like better at life, but, you know, you know, better physically, you know, better mentally, um, you know, improving their individual self, um, you know, have just general more discipline, you know, and come home and, and eat, you know, eat healthy versus just, you know, you know, drink a bunch of soda and, and then feel like garbage the next day. It's like, those are the types of things that we're teaching these kids at, at a young age. Um, and, you know, getting them the next step, which is like, okay, you, you've proven now that you can come to practice, you can work hard, um, you, you can have discipline. And then you get, you're going to class, you're doing your homework. And it's like, great, let's get you into, into a little bit different school. Let's get you into a better school. Um, let's get you in the school that's, that's right for, for, you know, the type of student that you are. Um, and that's why it's like a low opportunity neighborhood isn't going to have you know, kind of normal paths for, for these kids. There isn't a network there. The, the parents don't have the, the known structure of the experience in order to, to help, you know, guide their kids out and find the right path. It's just, they're just kind of keeping going. It's just this kind of continuous, um, you know, cycle. Uh, so what we're injecting is is new opportunity and, and bigger opportunity and, and the idea that, you know, dream big and, and think outside of, of your, you know, neighborhood and, and look at, you know, other things that you can experience in the world. Um, and then the hope is that, that they come back to their neighborhood uh, after they've had those experiences and, and help perpetuate the same mission that, you know, that, that we're operating. So that way the program becomes bigger than just, you know, the three of us and some donors in the States that are, that are trying to make a little bit of a difference. And it's like the community itself can start, you know, kind of change its, its whole trajectory. Scotty, you want to add anything? Well said. No, I think I think if there's one thing to take away from from what you guys just said is it's a it is a swimming nonprofit. It's a swim team. It's a swim program. But the outcomes we're looking for are not necessarily to have the fastest swimmer or something like that. I mean, what we're trying to do is is bigger than just how fast you can go back back and forth in the pool. Yeah. Yeah, very well said, everyone. Um, <clears throat> again, <laughs> thank you for this insight. If if you want to get involved, if you want to check out this program, it's nikanatadores.org. That's N-I-C-A, natadores.org. You can get involved. You can check out the the page. You can check out the team. It's a, it's a very cool website. It's a very cool program. Um, guys, I really appreciate you all taking the time to come on and, and talk about it. I've certainly feel like I've learned a lot today. Um, it's been really cool hearing the backstory of this program and just all the aspects of how it affects this community. Um, do you, we're, we're down to about three minutes. Do you guys have any parting thoughts before we sign off today? I'll start off with one Timmy and then hand it to you. And I would just say, um, you know, we're always looking for people to get involved. The swimming community is is a big community, but it is a small world. So, like you said, Coleman, it's cool to hear stories about how the sport brings people together um, earlier on in the conversation. Uh, so reach out to us. You know, there, there's ways to, to reach out and get involved on our site. You go check that out, and we'd love to talk to, to you and um, have you be part of, part of what we're doing. Yeah, I guess my my comment to close it off would be, you know, when I started this, you know, I never knew who would who would help, but I wasn't afraid to ask. And, um, you know, if you're listening to this and you want to get involved, but you might be afraid or just kind of uncomfortable. How can I help? You know, what what would it mean to help? Um, just get on our website or go on our social media page, Nika Nadadoris on Instagram, Nika Nadadoris on Facebook. Just get in touch and we'll put you in a role that that can uh, help these 
these kids or help our program in a really impactful way. And, um, you know, we need it because our network's small and we want to offer more kids that we've had to turn away just because of space and, um, and other issues. We've had to turn kids away because, because of that. And we want to get to the point where we can offer more kids this same opportunity and, uh, and, and grow our impact in terms of numbers, but, but keeping it really genuine and authentic. Um, so we always look for help. And um, the first thing you got to do without any, uh, any, any shame or anything is just send us a message and say, how can I help? I really want to be involved. So that's how I would close it off. And um, I really appreciate you taking the time to have us on here, Coleman. Yeah, thanks a lot. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.